So again, thank you uh, for being here. And I think you had something on your mind that you really wanted to take a look at. So could you tell me a little bit about what's swirling in your head? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Here's something I'd like to explore with you today. Um, so earlier in my career, I was working in consulting as a management consultant. And, um, you know, you're facilitating processes uh, with a group, you're helping, um, and you can be a neutral party there. Mm -hmm. And I made a switch and I'm now working in organizations. And what I find is um, when there's something like you're, you're in a meeting, you're trying to make a point, um, I feel those emotions coming up and going, oh no, we can't go there. And then what I find is I trigger into a different mode. I'll start talking faster. I'm not as connected and then I'm not as effective. Mm -hmm. And what I find interesting was like, well, wait, I was able to do that when I was in consulting, but it's so hard when you're more involved in it. So I was wondering if you could see or help me unpack mm -hmm. so that I become less reactive in those uh, situations um, mm -hmm. just to be able to be more resourceful and more connected. Mm -hmm. And I guess the part, the dilemma that I have is, so when you're consulting, you're not necessarily as attached or facilitating group session to the outcome because that belongs to the group. But mm -hmm. then when you're part of it, of the, of that, that, you know, mm -hmm. that those people having a conversation and you have mm -hmm. a stake in it, it's hard to make sure to just let go and say, okay, well, that's what you decided because <laughs> there's your viewpoint right. and what you want to bring into that conversation. Okay. So first I want to clarify this, the situation. So um, these are meetings uh, with peers, other leaders or with direct reports. Uh, I think this would be like meetings with, yeah, either peers or more senior leaders, like, you know, cross an okay. organization types of meetings. Yeah. Okay. So the stakes are a little higher even. Absolutely. Right. And um, you mentioned that what you really see is the dilemma is that you're more attached to the outcome and Absolutely. which then <laughs> clogs your brain and doesn't even get you even closer to the outcome that you're trying to create. Absolutely. Okay. And how long have you been internal now instead of cons a consultant? Um, I think it'd be like 11 years now. Yeah. So it's been about a decade. That you've been internal. So yeah. this has been going on for 11 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, have you changed positions? Yes, I've changed positions. I've changed organizations uh, mm -hmm. over that 10-year uh, period. Yeah. Okay. So... You're in these meetings and you're the facilitator. Or a contributor as well. Like it could okay, be we're in a particular meeting for a, a topic. Mm -hmm. um, because actually, if I am facilitating an internal meeting where I'm not as connected, I can become that consultant mode again or that, you know, third party mm -hmm. not as attached. So it's mostly when part of the issue or the dilemma would have an impact or doesn't necessarily align with um um with uh with where i was hoping we would go right in terms of what's being brought to, um, okay. to the table so it's more happens more when you're a contributor and you're not in control of how it's going um yeah well in some cases it could be where uh my team will have to support something in a in a specific direction right and it's yeah. trying to bring everybody like it, it will need to support the organization or that mm -hmm. role is either um yeah just going in a different direction there's different viewpoints potentially about uh about where to go um, and I guess sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. and here's a tendency where I notice is when some mm -hmm. of those decisions are overly simplified mm -hmm. and miss mm -hmm. part of the big picture, mm -hmm. uh, just because it's easier sometimes to go, wait, we're just going to make a decision. We're going to go this way. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. but wait, what about this? <laughs> okay. So I hear a little bit of conflict yes. as well. Okay. So it's um, in these moments and it sound again, as if you know, when you're a part of the team, but you see the team going in the wrong direction. So on one hand, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so is it that you want to find a different way of bringing forth uh, your perspective that, that um, maybe it's not being considered or that you'd like them to make more important than they're doing now? Yes. And it's learning how to do that without having, mm -hmm. you know, that emotion, like just the emotional or the reactivity aspect uh, in me that then I think just makes that messaging come and mm -hmm. hit harder, you yeah. know, as opposed to um, mm -hmm. uh, because there's an attachment to it. 
So mm -hmm. it is about that ability to bring it and mm -hmm. um, you almost have to bring it in a detached way, but you're mm -hmm. still attached to it. Like I think it is that <laughs> dilemma, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that's an interesting outcome. So I am attached to it, but I want to present it in a in a way that doesn't that's not attached. That you still want to explore, you want to keep the conversation open, um, but you have a sense of what's right and wrong. Uh, yeah, I did, and how to bring because I just noticed, you know, if it is there and it is offered, mm -hmm. that's where there tends to be more openness to it. But then there's mm -hmm. always the risk that even the offering um it might just lead to a different direction yeah you're so offering. and i well so the idea or the 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 other point of view that i'm offering yes okay. that's what i mean that it may not be considered it, it still may not be considered so i don't know if it is sometimes it's either just my expectation around where this might go okay. uh but i think maybe based on what you said earlier i'd like to focus on um reducing the react like when I bring it up to be able to mm -hmm. offer it in a different way right that will just create okay. more openness as opposed okay. to me kind of closing down around it and, okay. and coming at it from a reactive place so it's about the presentation even I think more so. so than what might happen afterwards I mean that, that's another issue accepting how Absolutely. they respond is another issue but is that the fear that's holding you back is that their response is not going to meet your expectation ah yes I think so. I think that's the fear that that will, um, and, and that the fear or mm -hmm. uh, also the perception of if I am presenting something and there's more emotion to it, then people mm -hmm. are not as receptive. So, um, so there's also in the way that I'll present it, it'll further reinforce the outcome that, um, that I hope uh, won't happen. And I think it's also the reason why I'm not bringing examples with content is I think the content is irrelevant, like in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got a number of things that are like, you know, kind of blocks in front of you is like, uh, you don't agree with what they're saying. So that's triggering you yeah, that they're having that response. But you're also concerned that when you present what you think, it's uh, it's not going to meet your the expectation that you have uh, and I think yeah. I have like a so here's what I think was happening okay. is I don't know why it came up while you were talking is I want to make sure that the conversation remains open to keep uh -huh. like the whole group curious about other possibilities right. as well so how but if I come with a uh, well it just closes down the conversation okay. as opposed to leaving that space open to curiosity so I think that's I would like outcome. to work on how do I present things so that the conversation at that point still leaves room for curiosity with everybody that's participating okay. as opposed to they've already came up with their mind and we're still going with that direction. Yeah. So how to bring more curiosity into those conversations. So I think the key word here for you, you've used it many times and is attachment. Mm -hmm. When you're attached, then there is a, you know, your opinion, your perspective is, is must be accepted because it's right. So you're attached to the outcome of the moment. But the conflict then is how do I uh, present this in a way that opens the conversation and I'm not attached to them accepting my point of view? As a, absolutely. And I think what would mm -hmm. help is if mm -hmm. maybe even if my idea didn't come in, mm -hmm. but the way I brought it created openness to seeing other possibilities, okay. I think I can be satisfied with that too. I think I get worried when I see things... Um, you know, just, just being should, simplified. Yeah. From, yeah. And not so is that what the attachment means to you? Tell me, tell me about attachment, that word. What are you attached to in that? Um, I think when I'm attached or when I have that sense that I'm attached is when I mm -hmm. see some decisions that are oversimplifying the problem and mm -hmm. how to address it. Um, mm -hmm. because there's lots to consider, uh, you know, everybody mm -hmm. is busy. I appreciate that, but it's like, Hey, mm -hmm. we'll go there and we'll just do this. And it's okay. like, well, wait, but if we just go there and just do this, then there's all these potential consequences that could happen. So maybe let's explore that before first deciding. Um, so I think it is, a, it's in those specific situations. I think it's when we've, you know, converged to a solution too quickly before kind of considering okay. the broader aspects. So is that when you said the trigger before yeah. that in that moment of that okay they just decided too quickly and they don't know what they're what they're doing and they could create more problems that you get this emotional reaction that then 
And yes, mm-hmm. and I don't think I'm not, like I'm judging the they don't know what they're doing. I don't think that's coming in. Okay. Uh, but it's like, wait, the, the, this information wasn't considered or we didn't talk about this or we didn't explore the yeah. repercussions of that. So it's more mm-hmm. from a it might be more from a process perspective than a okay like than the individuals themselves. Um, OK, yeah. So. In the way that you just said that, mm-hmm. but wait, yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That, that that demonstrated the trigger, you know, but what you said afterwards, I think there's some things that haven't been considered yet that I think yeah. should be considered. Yeah. You know, so so that's what it is you want to happen. That's the conversation, right? Can Absolutely. we just step back for a moment and consider a couple of things? If if this hap if you do this, this might happen. Yeah. Would that be useful in this moment? Yeah. You know, so is there a way, because that's what you said you want to present them with. Yes. But then you say what's getting in the way. It's like, no, <laughs> we can't do that. So is that, is that the moment that you want to shift? Yes. So you can uh, make the offering of exploration. And I think um, there is just in a way that, yeah, you kind of replayed it back, which I'm just hearing in terms of if I bring back like my facilitator or consultant approach or in there is instead of being focused on that end decision at that point ah, is focusing okay. on what is that like, okay, wait, where, which part are we at in the process? And maybe they've already decided to go there, but I could just focus on opening up the process instead of like, no, the solution is wrong. Um, uh, so, so that, that creates, I think, okay. the action. So what I heard is the big piece of this, and I'd like you to state that succinctly, is that it's not about the outcome. I'm getting attached to the outcome when it's really the process and the moment that I'd like to address. That's what I, I know. I, I haven't seen it that way. So I think what I'm attached to is that the process we're using to discuss something is being shortcut and it hasn't brought okay. in room. But um, I'm kind of looking at it as the solution is wrong and I'm attached to that outcome. But in fact, I think I'm attached to we didn't like we didn't create the space to have the right conversation to know how to address this issue. So okay. I think that could help me because I know how to bring those process tools in. <laughs> <laughs> right. From all your consultant experience. And to create that openness and just to mm. offer. And sometimes yeah. I appreciate there's no time. We're on short timelines or whatever, but say, hey, could we just see for yeah. a moment or bring do you want to try this out? Could we just explore other aspects of this? Like understanding this seems like it could help, but mm. I think there's a way to ask whether there's openness to try a different process or to to expand our process instead. And I could see that being less triggering mm. uh, for me. Um, mm. Might depend. I still might have it. It's something mm-hmm. that is, uh-huh. I know it is um, blocking me from being effective. So I thought, hey, mm-hmm. this could be a good one just to explore to make me more effective um, for everybody else in that group, yeah. right, um, as well. Well, you know, so I want to just step it back. You just had um, what I think was, you know, a way forward that if there's a way I can just stop and say, there's a couple of process tools I'd like to bring in or however you said that to take, yeah. can we stop for a second and just take a look at the process? Um, before we make a final decision. Um, I want to come back to, you know, again, the attachment, what makes that difficult, Mm -hmm. because you said, well, I think I still feel that. Well, that's okay. That's a great awareness. I'll still feel it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Because you can't just walk away, you know, as the consultant would. This is important and important to your team to get the results they want. So there's a lot of things that that are important to you, you, you want to make sure, uh, is protected. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, but you said you had a way, maybe this would work, even if I'm a little triggered by it, that I could do this. So is that possible for you to be able to shift the conversation to the process instead of the solution? Um, so I think it could be, I think it's a, like, it's something I have not experimented with yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, um, sometimes what happens is I'm attached, like, wait, the solution could cause some potential consequences that we don't want to address. And we're not talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder, and just maybe using some questions, I would say, Hey, okay. So if we choose to do this, what do we see as a potential unintended consequences? could be a way even without saying, hey, I'd like to bring process in because um, 
Okay. There could be some, there could be some, wait, what do you mean? We've already made a decision, but I could say, okay, so I could ask a question that has people reflect on, oh, wait a minute. You're right. We didn't consider this. Yeah. Um, so if I'm, so I think what I'm saying is I think about, okay, where are we at in the process mm -hmm. instead of how do I create more space to open up and ask questions or curiosity? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to put me more in a, like in a different types of observer role, as opposed to being immersed in the content and what by me, what by might be missing about the content in that conversation at that moment. And so looking at, okay, how do we come to this decision or this conversation and what else have we not explored that would be worthwhile exploring before we confirm that that is our decision? Okay. So I hear, hear a real shift in who you are mm -hmm. in this meeting that it's, you know, not that you're, uh, you, you come in as I'm responsible for this. You're now coming in with, um, I'm a leader that has a consultative approach that I think would be helpful. Is that? So, so yes okay. I think that's uh, um so somebody was giving me an analogy of um you know pretending you're in a tornado and you want to be in the center of the tornado where it's calm and mm -hmm. as soon as you're being pulled out into the edge you're like <laughs> <getting Yeah. sentenced. laughs> so I think coming back to the skills or what I'm able to bring to the table to just feel mm -hmm. in that center where it's more calm where you can observe what's happening around you and offer mm -hmm. um and I also think, you know, based on that attachment is mm -hmm. not, um, even though I might do it this way, that I can't be attached mm -hmm. to the outcome, right? For a bunch of reasons, you're working with a lot of people, it might still go to a route where there's no time to consider the aspect or the group was willing to accept those co potential consequences that might happen. Mm -hmm. But at least there would have been room to surface it or acknowledge it. And I think that could be helpful. Okay. So what I hear, you know, when you at attach you know, to what you want to create is to be calm in the center of the storm, to, to maintain I, that calmness. Yeah. So you do say what you feel is most effective, taking in all the skills that you have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because I tend to, I have a lot of energy. I'm high energetic. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I get to, yeah, this is a bit mm -hmm. too much of me that's coming into the conversation. Um, but if I can center myself and be that like, yeah, remind myself of the con uh, consultative leadership role or, or, yeah, collaborative leadership role that I want to bring there. Um, okay. It's just that good reminder and centering myself that way. Okay. So that's who you are. That's what you really want mm -hmm. is, is that calmness helps you to be. So, so, so if you see yourself calm in, in the center of the tornado with this group. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who are you at your best? And I don't know what you're looking for by that question, but I think it's like open, attentive, curious. Mm -hmm. um, and then by creating that space, mm -hmm. I also believe that you invite others to be as well. Um, but if I'm frantic, if I'm talking fast, I'm creating like more anxiety around it, which people will want, whoa, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they'll have the same uh, kind of reaction to it. So if I can remain calm in the center um, and... Um, yeah. And for those who are already calm in the center, this approach will work uh, as well for them. So I'm kind of joining with them in that calmness during that meeting. That's great. So is this a real shift for you in terms of being uh, a leader in organizations to bring this uh, capability, calmness and capability into these meetings? I think it, it is often in organization where there's still a lot of like more the hierarchical, the, the top down command and control approach um, in some organization. I think this way uh, and the way I lead my team is more like so my team and my direct reports, these issues are there because the little environment that I create. But then mm -hmm. once you go out, it's different. So mm -hmm. it is more it's fundamentally how I believe you bring people into a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think it is part of a, a, a shift that I do want to to bring into every mm -hmm. place where I work. Yeah. Okay, every place. So it's a big value for you. Absolutely. Yeah, to to encourage uh, openness and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so so it's a value. So this is really really important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, in your whole development. So, and mm -hmm. maybe as an example, recently I was helping another group. They asked me for some help, so I did uh, facilitate a meeting for them. Mm -hmm. And like at the end of that, somebody said, "Wow, that was a lot less." 
painless and I was hoping like there weren't any emotions mm -hmm. attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I think it made me, and this was only recently, which made me mm -hmm. reflect like, wow, if that, like that is a great outcome. If people felt they could come to a meeting, that the space was mm -hmm. so open that they didn't feel like they needed their emotions to bring in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think for me, it was like, wait, when you jump into that area, how do you create a space for yourself to not jump into that emotional or reactive mode? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think with, um, that, well, just what is your role? And I think reframing it around what is the role you're playing now, as opposed to where is this conversation going and how do we adjust right. it? <laughs> it's different. So it positions it more about, wait, what role am yeah. I playing at this table right now? And how can I bring this role into this conversation is a, is an interesting shift that I hadn't considered. Okay. So what is that role? So I think that role is to not only focus when I'm listening to the conversation, to, to the content or the words, or the, but to see, okay, what has been considered so far? What is not mm -hmm. being considered? Um, mm -hmm. And how can I ask a question so that there's more of a shared understanding around all the aspects surrounding what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. And so, and those questions might be like, I might already have an idea about a potential consequence or um, but I think asking the question would maybe invite others first to kind of share in. And um, and I think what happens is for the sake of efficiency, I'm like, well, I'm just going to say what I'm seeing mm -hmm. and it might not always be the most helpful. So if I play, well, wait, what do we see about this or what could be potential mm -hmm. consequences? I think mm -hmm. it creates more space for, I don't know, maybe people to jump in and looking at it differently. So playing that role instead uh, and not worrying so much about, yeah the time because I do think I have in the back oh wait can't take too yeah. much time or we but yeah. yeah okay so um is that role then more in, in, uh, important enough to you to override the emotions about your attachment to the outcome I think so because what mm -hmm. I could see myself doing is after um after a meeting instead of assessing did we get the outcome that that we were hoping for? It could be about, wait, in that meeting, did you play, you know, the role that you wanted to play? Um, and uh, so I think it's just an easier one. Um, and it's something I'm more in control of. So it would be easier to, to assess than being attached to that outcome that I don't <laughs> have, okay. you know, and I might not, I'm not, and I might not even be a hundred percent right about that outcome being the best in that situation <laughs> too, right? But if I'm assessing myself against that, then guaranteed I'll be disappointed. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, sometimes we backtrack. <laughs> yeah. But you said that you would assess it afterwards. You know, so what is, you know, because you're so busy and everybody's busy and you said that, you know, this, mm -hmm. the, the environment, um, what is like just one sentence or even one word before you go into the meeting that can remind you of the essential role you want to play? Mm -hmm. I, and I don't know, the word that just came up was more about curiosity. If I can just be in that curious mm -hmm. mindset uh, about the role that I that can play mm -hmm. and bring curiosity to the table, I think that might help me as a good reminder. So it's not about the content I bring to the table, but it's about that curiosity mindset I think that could be more helpful okay so what I heard you say is curiosity over content yeah absolutely okay so <laughs> so you've got your mantra yeah <laughs> before you go into the meeting so um when's your next meeting oh I have meetings like <laughs> basically every day but it depends on <laughs> not all of them are the same kind with the different types of okay. uh of of topic but there there's likely one later this afternoon um, okay, so you could put this in play. Absolutely. So, okay, so what's going to help remind you to do this before you go into this meeting? I think what I want to make sure, and I find especially these days with all these online meetings, like you mm -hmm. hang up from one and you jump into the next. Mm -hmm. So I do think because if this is a, a new, I need that five minutes before the meeting starts, right? Just before, okay. not just log off one meeting and jump into the next, but that five minutes okay. to go, okay, just putting myself, like centering myself okay. before I enter the meeting. Yeah. Um, Center yourself in the middle of the tornado. First before it starts. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm able to observe yeah. if I'm getting into the outsides of the tornado yeah. during the meeting. Yeah. Well, there really is in the way you describe it, you know, the, the tornado is the frantic, but the calmness yeah. is the peace. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So centering yourself can bring the peace in. Before absolutely. You okay. So are you ready to try that today? Oh, absolutely. Like this is something mm -hmm. I want to like crack the nut on, right? And really make it a new pattern. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So you've got your steps. You're going to go in there. Um, you know, recognizing, because you said it a couple times, I still might get triggered. <sighs> so in the moment that you're in the meeting and you might feel that because you said it was here <laughs> and I could viscerally feel it, that you might feel the trigger, what might you do to bring you back to the center of the tornado? I am wondering, I haven't done this. Uh, so there's a, uh, I think I need to, a friend of mine uh, a few years ago passed on this to me that goes, diplomacy is the art of letting someone have, have it, it your you. way. <laughs> um, but what's interesting is your way gets to be, uh, I don't know, depends on, on how you want to define that. But I think mm -hmm. I wonder if I should just replace that one. And I am thinking more about this curiosity over content and maybe having a post-it on my screen. Because mm -hmm. um, as your eyes kind of look and uh, you put it there. So that will work for virtual meetings, not in-person meetings. Um, I think I have enough self-awareness that I, I'll start feeling it in my body when I feel I'm starting to rush. Um, mm -hmm. cause that's usually kind of the way it starts to present itself, uh, to just take a step the back. Okay. Yeah. The rush. And then the other pieces mm -hmm. I know too, like if there's some people from my team or other people I can ask, I could say, Hey, I'm actively trying to work on this. Um, can you pay attention during the meeting? <laughs> No, <laughs> maybe do know. this for curiosity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just give me a sign and it'll help me count. Sometimes you need to en okay. enlist others in helping you out. Um, okay, just so to I break it. I want to just acknowledge when you said the rush, it was a breathing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, do you stop breathing at that moment? Um, I don't know if I stop breathing, but I possibly start breathing faster, faster. right? Or And not as okay. deep. Like you yeah. just use like, you know, the upper part. Okay, so that would be an acknowledgement. Is the moment you start to feel the, uh, the 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 faster breathing, and I think you said that at the beginning, mm -hmm. that that's starting to rise up. That that would be yeah. the moment to bring your mantra back into your mind. And in, in, and I love that you you've got people that'll help you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of like an overused passion. I would kind of try to describe. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what. That's the attachment, isn't it? Yes. That you're you're attached to a to a, a good outcome. You want mm -hmm. this to be the right way. Yeah, you have a sense of what's right or wrong. <clears throat> but that little thing you ha held up, maybe they see it a different way. Yeah, yeah. But I want to also acknowledge that you said if I do it this way, they'll probably hear me better anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're calmer. You brought in and the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if everybody can leave the meeting with a better understanding, regardless of what the final decision is, that's still right. worthwhile. Okay. That's your assessment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did yeah. we leave the meeting with at least a better understanding? I think that could be better because that at least yeah. I can, although I don't a hundred percent control, I control, like I could be part of it way more than the actual content or the final decision. Um, so did we leave? Was there more information shared? Was there more shared understanding? Right. Um, and maybe even, you know, despite that, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, maybe the different decision was made because there's, you know, other factors Better to take into consideration. So I think it could be okay to go, well, we discussed it. This information came up and the group, um, yeah, I think you could, uh, I think it would just help focus where I can put my energies. Um, definitely. Okay. Because it's not always going to turn out the way you want. No, it doesn't for anybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, okay. So, and I just want to leave you with, you know, this is a shift and you said it's a shift. So it's not an immediate change. I'm going to go be perfect at this. Um, so, so being able to be kind to yourself um, yeah. as you make this transformation, which is so powerful for you. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. That's great. Good. Yes, I, I can also be impatient with myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want a good affront come from Absolutely yourself as right. well. <laughs> yes, yes. But that again comes back to your passion. Your yeah, passion absolutely. For the greatest results. Absolutely. So, yeah. No, so. this has been helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, again, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>